we are at the border of Utah and Arizona in the middle of nowhere because we are on one of the craziest adventures of our life right now. The wave. wave. This adventure is very unique to us because we are not on a guided tour. We are doing all the wayfinding and doing the seven miles hike by ourselves. The wave is situated in the Coyote Buttes North area and is only accessible for people who have permits. Only 20 permits are awarded for each day because this is a fragile land zone and they want to limit the number of people. So we'll not only show you our adventure to the wave but also how to win the lottery and enjoy this journey yourself. Let's go. As you saw in a previous video, Kanab is very central to so many other great adventures around. The wave is one of them. So we left from there at around 8 a.m. We'll be driving 30 minutes on Route 89. It's a paved highway. And once we reach the House Valley Rock Road, that's where the unpaved road begins, which is going to be fun. So we made it to the wire pass trailhead. That's where you start your wave hike. As you saw, we passed through the House Rock Valley Road. Some patches had big rocks but other than that most of the road is very easy to pass through even with the Kia sedan that we picked up from the airport but if when it's wet you probably cannot even pass it with a 4 cross 4 so keep that in mind and check the weather and road conditions on the day of your hike we all set to hike to the wave once we were at the parking lot we displayed our permit on the dashboard because the rangers do check for um, non permit holders and also find them a fee. Secondly, you need to sign into the register and then you get started. So after about half a mile on the Coyote Wash, you'll come at this intersection. It's difficult to find that, but look on your right for a board like that and take the trail up. If you keep walking on the left, that's the wrong path. Not even a mile into this hike and it's already feeling hot. <laughs> Just like angels landing. The minute you start climbing up an elevation, you start to warm up. On that part of the trail, you need to look for a saddle. The maps given by PLM are really good. They have pictures and text, so if you just follow that, that's also good enough. But we also have our offline maps on all trails. Once you are very close to the saddle, you'll see this Coyote Buttes North permit required beyond this point trail marker, and that should also guide you. Crossing the saddle is a little tricky, quite different than what we've treaded so far. Basically climbing stairs, think of it that way. But pretty steep okay. stairs. <laughs> yeah, look at the view behind. Gorgeous. Let's keep going. Wow. Look at all those rocks out there. There's a little wayfinding sign here. This is the part where hiking is even a little more difficult. You're walking on a slope, so you'll be putting more pressure on your legs and calves. Once you've crossed all these sandstone layers, look out for twin buttes. Those are two teepees that you need to follow. Okay, so where are the twin buttes? What now? So from the twin butte, we need to go from its right side, and then we'll see sand dunes and vertical crevice. The wave might be the destination, but I think the trail leading up to the wave is also absolutely gorgeous. So I can see all these wave-like structures already showing up. To reach point 8, hike down Sandy Hill and continue north. Two small sand dunes. Walking on the sand has been more tiring because it just slows you down. You're pushing yourself through the sand. There's not enough friction like you would get on a more solid surface. So there's a mix of sand and stone throughout this trail. Next, you'll pass through the Utah Arizona state line. Once you cross that, you're in Arizona and you have to walk through all these sand dunes and you're very close to wave now. You'll see another dune going up. That's the one you should not take, even if you see footprints on them. It's a steep climb, not leading to the wave. Where you should be going is this side, where the sandstone layers are. We can start seeing the swirl patterns. The million dollar view, getting so close to it now, right here.
We can't believe we are right now in the wave. I don't have any words at all. My God, look at all of these structures. Sankesh is now gonna surf on the wave. <laughs> Ride the wave. <laughs> There are so many photo ops here at the wave. My personal favorite, which you'll see on the internet too, is right in the middle of the wave. Second favorite spot, the reflection pond. I, I hope whenever you guys come here, there's some water. And third, there's an alley that goes inside. There'll be a lot of shadows there, but it also gives a really nice brown red picture. So even if we are not really pro photographers, I hope some of these tips that I gave you for photos help you out. The biggest tip actually for any photos here would be try to be here right when the sun is above you because the wave kind of creates an asymmetric picture when there are shadows. So it's perfect when the sun is right above you, which is around noon in summers, but around winters, the sun is low on the horizon. So around 11 o'clock, 11.30 will be better. After exploring the wave, it's time to get some lunch. We've packed some sandwiches, some savory, some sweets, just to get our sugar high and a lot of water. So there are no trash cans over here. You need to pack out everything that you carry. I'm sure when you guys also come, you're gonna take a lot of pictures and videos. So carry a power bank that this will come in handy. We are now checking out some other unique natural geological formations and features out here. Wave is not the only one. A lot of people just come visit the wave and go back, but there's a ton of other stuff you can do here. Wow. It's like a reservoir out of nowhere. I have no clue what these are. Never seen anything like this. And this right here is the second wave. Nice little tiny miniature wave. Looks like ice cream. Ice cream, yeah. <laughs> Different layers. Rocky Road maybe? More like butter scotch. Yes. Lot of scrambling. Everything behind that we explored looks so small. And there's more climbing left. Let's see how far up can we go. That's the wave right there. You know, if I'm smiling, what that means? That means I finally found where I was going. This here is the top rock arch. So pretty, just look at it. That's beautiful. You can see the same pool that we saw on our way up. Look at all that climb that I did. I wish Chai would have made it here, but it's okay. It's much better to be safe than sorry. So that was Top Rock Arch. From here, we are now gonna go towards the Melody Arch. And on the way, there is an alcove and some sand dunes. I still can't believe I am right in the middle of all of this landscape. And all of it is to myself. So right around this formation, they say, should be the alcove. Looks like we're getting there. Yep, I see it. Wow, that's the alcove. And I can hear myself echoing. If you're enjoying this video so far, subscribe to our channel Mad Over Exploring. I am right now in the alcove. Looks so grand. Wow. Look at all those fine details. So after the alcove and the dune, we are now making our way to the Melody Arts. I think I took a shortcut that I shouldn't have taken. But this looks very steep. Looks like this is the right way. And that, my friends, is the Melody Arch. This is just like the alcove, but even cooler because you see the window out there. You can look at all those teepees up there. Such a wonderful view.
the BLM map does not have directions to the Melody Arch, Top Rock Arch or the second wave. I'm so grateful that we had the All Trails app because it made it so much more convenient and easy to get to all these points. So it's time to head back down and I can see Chai from here. Chai say hi to everyone! Hi! I don't know if you really heard her <laughs> but she was down there so I'm glad. We're both okay. Sankesh is all the way up there if you can see him. I hope the footages are good. I can't wait to see it in GoPro because I had no energy to go up there. Be cautious when you're climbing, go slow. Just like any hike, going down is what's difficult than going up because you're looking at all the depth below you and it can be scary. Plus there's some slick sand. So see where you put your foot because you could slip and fall. So this right here was the part where Chai decided she wasn't gonna come. And it's really indeed challenging compared to anything else we did up there. But crawl to the rescue. All right, almost there. Cool. Now it should be like a walk in the park, right? Wow, I can't believe I conquered that beast. That was a fun climb. So we are now making our way out of the second wave and going towards the sand coves. These are the sand coves. These formations are also known as the swirl. Every turn you take here, you come to a new spot. <laughs> we are walking through the boneyard now. We are so sad that this is almost coming to an end. <laughs> so the last sight to see were the dinosaur tracks. That's pretty cool, right? Look at those tiny, tiny foot imprints. Can't believe I'm touching dinosaur tracks. I'm not sure if they really are dinosaur tracks or if someone just <laughs> chipped them. But if they are, then that's really cool. After the dinosaur tracks, we are back on the sand dunes. Oh, that's way right there. Is it? Bye-bye. It was a great day today. <laughs> and now we are back on the same trail that we took to get into the wave. Starting to get a little chilly because there's no sun here, but we see people going. So I think we'll make it out in time. So making your way out is equally challenging as going to the wave. Challenging in terms of wayfinding not the difficulty of the hike. So the same kind of landmarks apply when you're going back to. From the dinosaur track, we came down on the sandy trail and then we have to head towards the Twin Buttes again. Those are the two iconic landmarks that help you guide on this trail. So from Twin Buttes, make sure that you look out for this marker. And there's another shimmer of hope, another marker. And there's another marker there. These are proving to be very valuable. It can get confusing over here because there are two paths but of course look at the footprints that's the way to take so we are back at the sign of coyote buttes north as you can see permits are required beyond this point we made a small oopsie we left our entire permit slip on the dashboard of our car we were actually supposed to tear half of it and put it on our backpack fortunately the ranger had our names on the roster for today on his phone so he was able to check us in and allow us to explore the wave so don't make that mistake make sure to read the entire slip correctly and keep the right tag with you it's incredible how the human body can cope up with exertion and such difficulty even if it's not done that before this is probably our first time that we've done a hike over eight miles or so i went all the way up to the melody arch came down that was an elevation gain of over 500 or 600 feet it definitely helps to train well in advance that's what we had done hiking training um, guide that we were using from rei we'll leave that in the description and other than that we were also going on hikes almost every couple of weeks. It started off with like one mile hike, two miles, three miles. It's incredible that today we were able to go over eight miles. 
feels good to see cars passing by because that means we are at the trailhead again. All right, six hours, 12 minutes, 8.5 miles. That's awesome. As soon as you're back, you must be tempted to just drive out. But don't forget that you need to come back to the register. And let them know when you signed out. 4.54 p.m. Oh, that was one hell of an adventure. I don't have any words. We want to share all the tips, things that you need to know when you do this hike to the wave. Why don't we start at how you should get this permit and then we'll tell you all the tips that you should follow once you're there. So now let's break down the process of applying for the wave permit. A daily maximum of 64 people are awarded permits for a day and there are two ways to win it. 48 people or 12 groups, whichever comes first, are awarded permits online four months in advance. 16 people or four groups, whichever comes first, can win it via a walk-in lottery at the visitor center in Kanab one day before. To apply for the online permit like we did, start at recreation.gov and search for the wave. Once you're on this page, scroll down to see the month you can apply for. For example, you can enter the lottery for November in July. The draws occur on the first of the following month, that would be August 1st. Once you have your date finalized, go to the top right and hit register for open lottery. We'd recommend you create an account beforehand with your basic details. After verifying basic info about yourself, you can select a maximum of three dates that you can apply for. Enter the three dates along with the group size for each selection, which is going to be a maximum of six people per group. Once you've made your selections, proceed to the cart and pay the $9 non-refundable lottery fee for the application. If you win, you'll receive an email to confirm the permit and pay a recreation fee of $7 per person. You'll also be mailed the hard copy along with maps and guidelines for the hike. If you don't win the permit online for the dates you want, your next bet is to apply in person at the Kanab Center one day before. Although the in-person chances are higher than the online lottery, there is definitely a risk of applying multiple days in a row and still not winning it. So what we would recommend if you do want to go that route is plan a stay in Kanab. Even if you don't win, there are so many natural wonders and offbeat trails that you can go on from Kanab, such as the White Pocket and Great Chamber. We've covered a few in our Kanab video here, so feel free to check it out. So when should you apply and when should you go for this hike? November through March has higher chances because of less visitation, but there can be snow on the rocks and the trails could be slippery. A Thursday in mid-November worked out great for us in terms of the trail conditions, weather, and perhaps also the odds of winning the lottery. Peak months of summer are very hot in the desert as well as crowded because of the summer vacations. So we do not recommend that at all. So a general tip would be be flexible with your dates in the month apply for the weekdays instead of the weekends to improve your chances. Although we won it on the very first attempt of ours, there is not a sure shot way that we can prescribe you because at the end of the day, this is a lottery and it depends on luck. In addition to whatever we've captured so far, there are a couple of other things that you should know. Firstly, you can hire local guides to help you with the drive to the trailhead as well as showing you around wave and the other spots if you are not confident about this adventure by yourself. There's a list of approved outfitters on recreation.gov. We've toured with Dreamland Safari Tours on a couple of other tours, so we can highly recommend them as a good choice for this one too. Also keep in mind that rangers do inspect your permit at the wave. So if you're planning to visit this place without a permit, expect to be fined between $1,000 and $10,000 and possibly even jail time. So don't even try doing that. So that's it from us. We appreciate you sticking till the end. If you found any value from this video, smash that like button and share this video with your friends to inspire them to go to the wave too. Hope this video helps you plan and experience this dream hike. If you're watching us for the first time, subscribe to our channel for more insightful information about other wonders in this country. See you in the next one. Peace.